Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we are glad that you have decided to join us on this Wednesday. Pray that you've had a good week already and that God is blessing. It's a big week. Uh, for instance, for our two oldest grandsons, they began school today. They attend Brookville, and Brookville is giving the option of in person or uh, parents choosing to uh, online. So uh, our boys physically are in school today uh, as they are going on campus. So pray for everybody getting back in the groove. Let me just share with you, and especially our educators in the church, that on Sunday morning in the 1030 service on uh, August 30th, um, I believe last, last lesson I taught, I said April, so I, I apologize for that. But on August 30th, Sunday morning at 1030, we're going to be praying specifically for our teachers and administrators, anybody that are, uh, is working in the school system as aides or bus drivers. We're going to have a special time of prayer for you this, uh, this coming uh, August 30th, a week from Sunday morning. So I, I hope that maybe you'll make uh, plans to be part of that and uh, spread the news. And we'll, we'll, we'll be giving you some update on that, okay? Also, some of you have asked, are we ever going to get a bulletin back? The answer is yes. That's a great question. Uh, we have not done that uh, based on the recommendations of uh, church health people about putting things in people's hands. But uh, beginning in September, uh, a hard copy bulletin will be back available as well as my sermon notes. So uh, we've only got a couple more weeks left in the Second Coming series. And uh, boy, I'm looking forward to this Sunday. Um, and the title is The Keeper of the Keys. Jesus is coming. Amen. So uh, bow your heads, if you will. Hope you have your Bible close and we'll open the word together. Father, thank you t tonight uh, on this Wednesday for the opportunity to open your word once again. We pray for every ministry of our church. From the pulpit, Lord, down to uh, Jay and Kathy and Donna who continue to keep our facilities clean and, and those who uh, do all the little things behind the scenes uh, that we fail to recognize on a day-to-day -day basis. We thank you for the servant heart that you have placed in this church. Open our hearts tonight to receive your word and help us to just get a fresh truth that, and I believe maybe somebody that's watching needs to hear. I pray for the senior couple that may be battling uh, a fear of getting out or perhaps health issues. We pray for them right here, right now. We pray for the parents that are wrestling with, uh, do they put their kids on a bus or don't they, and, and uh, how that affects child care and, and work and everything else. So we pray for everyone involved in those decisions. God, uh, we ask that you would wrap your arms around this pandemic and just shut it down to the point where people say what happened and that you could be the only answer. So help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, recently, I was with a bunch of preachers, and the question was asked, what's your favorite book in the Bible? Now, uh, should our answer not be all of them? But the truth is we have some favorites, don't we? And uh, my response was the book of Romans. Uh, you say, what? Number one, as I preached through the book of Romans a few years ago, uh, I just learned so much about the grace of God and uh, how, how it's God who does the saving and, and we need to trust Him. And, and I really loved uh, the book of Romans. But I also love the book of Philippians. Many of you know it's entitled The Book of Joy, and there's a lot of preaching based on the book of Philippians. But do you realize that when Paul wrote Philippians, uh, he wrote from jail, and that Paul was imprisoned, listen, for simply preaching the gospel. But he didn't let that pull him away from the joy that was rightfully his in Christ, meaning that Paul's circumstances did not dictate his expression of praise, or how he felt. As a matter of fact, in chapter 2, listen to what Paul says. Or I'm sorry, in chapter 1, verse 12. Here's what Paul says. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which have happened to me 
have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Isn't that awesome? So that it's become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. I'm a prisoner for Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become more confident in my chains. So God hasn't wasted pain. This isn't a wasted opportunity. This is not just wasted time. Do you ever waste time? I remember as a boy growing up, let me tell you some things I did as a boy. When I was little, I played with uh, Matchbox and Hot Wheels. You know, I, I played with cars. And then as I got older, it was all, you know, I was consumed with ball. And one way I was consumed with ball was I collected baseball cards. Uh, some of you did too. And every now and then, I would, I would get some clothespins from mom, and I would clip those baseball cards into the, on the spokes of my cheater slick huffy bicycle. Can you remember something like that? And when those wheels would turn, man, them cards would pop, and I really thought I had something going. As, as a matter of fact, uh, it, maybe in my fifth or sixth grade year, uh, I talked Dad into letting me put uh, chopper forks on that cheater slick bicycle. So I turned that suburban uh, middle-class kid's bike with the banana seat into a chopper. I went from a... Uh, uh, a, a little boy to a bike, uh, like a motorcycle chopper rider, just like that. And uh, but I can remember those baseball cards. And and for you kids, let me let me tell you about that. You could get a pack of baseball cards for twenty five cents, and in that pack of baseball cards there would be a stick of bubble gum. Do you guys remember that? For twenty five cents, or uh, five packs for twenty five cents. That's what it was. So for five, because, because very seldom did, did you have a dollar, right? Five packs for 25. I really thought I was spending big. Uh, five packs of ball cards, five pieces of gum for 25 cents. Now, now it costs you X amount of dollars just to buy a pack. And, uh, but man, I wish I still had all of them. I kept them in a shoebox, tried to keep them organized. And, and some of my favorite players growing up, of course, was Pete Rose and the Reds. But, um, I loved a guy named Rod Carew. And one thing about Rod Carew, who played for the Twins, he normally led the league in batting, but he, he was like the man of a hundred different stances at the plate. He was always changing his stance. Well, Paul never did change his stance. He was always preaching the gospel. He was always faithful to the message. And he said, my chains have, have been evident to even the, the, the guys who are guarding me to other believers around me, they are encouraged by the chains in which have me. He says, Some indeed preach Christ from envy and strife, and some from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, those who preach from envy and strife. Uh, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my change. But the latter... But the latter, those who preach from goodwill, they preach out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel, that God has put me here for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. So Paul's saying, whatever people think really doesn't matter, whether whether the, it, it all depends that the truth is preached and the truth is declared. And Paul said, I'm going to be that one. Okay, I'm going to be that one. Now, in this book of Philippians, it's only four, four chapters, four short chapters. You can read the book of Philippians right here tonight. Uh, in chapter 3, Paul says, I've learned to be content. In chapter 4, he talks about his thought process. And he says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue in, in this, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, 
and the God of peace will be with you. Paul said, I can't control somebody throwing me in jail. Paul's saying that I can't control what others are doing to me. But there are some things I can control. And I want to share with you tonight just a simple truth from a recent counseling tool by a guy named John Gordon. And I want you to draw a circle and I want you to write these things outside of the circle. Okay? These would be things outside of my control. For instance, other people's opinions. You can't control another person's opinion. Uh, you can't control another person's mistake. You know, we, we live in a world where we make mistakes and other people make mistakes. You know what we need to learn is how to show grace when somebody else messes up. Do you know that person who's the first one to identify something wrong with somebody else but they fail to see what's going on in their own life? You can't control other people's opinions. Uh, there are plenty of opinions, right, floating around right now, especially during an election year. You can't control other people's mistakes. People will mess up, and so will you, and so will I. I, I would dare say that that probably will happen today sometime. So look for ways to exhibit grace. Uh, you can't control adversity. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The Bible says uh, in this world you will have tribulation. So you can't control adversity. Tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, I have the great honor to be sworn in as the police chaplain for the village of Camden. Now many of you know the police chief goes to our church and, and not too long ago gave his life to Christ and we got to see his family come and baptized and they're faithful uh, active members here. And, and I praise the Lord for our friendship. And I look forward to the opportunity, hopefully just to continue to minister to our police force who desperately need it and to our community. Um, every day when I pray for them as they serve our community, we pray for the unknown of only God knows what today will bring forth. You can't control adversity. God is in charge and we live in a world full of sin. Okay? You can't control other people's feelings. You know, feelings change. Uh, you might have two children and one of them is very soft where a, a stern word and they just maybe break down and cry or get real quiet and you get their attention. Whereas you may have another child who has a different type of feeling and you need, you need to really get their attention because they just don't seem to fall in line. You can't control other people's feelings. And then lastly, you can't control other people's actions, how they respond to things or what they do. Uh, we're living in a day, aren't we, where people are doing things that we would not think would be imaginable years ago. But the truth is you can't control someone else's actions. All you can do is decide to do the right thing. And that's what Paul did. And that's what Paul said. He said, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just and pure and lovely and are of a good report, if there's any virtue in these things that are praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Paul said there is something that you can control. So you, you've, you've drawn the circle, and outside of the circle you've got other people's opinions, other people's mistakes, adversity, other people's feelings, other people's actions. John Gordon goes on to say, but there are some things you can control. So inside the circle, write things I can control and jot these down. Here's the first one. You can control your attitude. John Maxwell says you can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to what happens to you. So our attitude, you know, a bad attitude ruins the whole meeting. A bad attitude ruins the whole team. A bad attitude, man, just kind of sucks the life out of uh, anything positive that's going forward. We've all been there, and maybe we're the ones who have exhibited the bad attitude, or we've played with another team member that's had a bad attitude. Okay, 
You've heard it said before, there is no I in the word team, right? It's us. So we can control our attitude. Here's another thing we can control, our effort. Our effort. Years ago, Philadelphia 76er great guard Allen Iverson uh, was questioned by the press because he did not show up for practice or something like that. And Allen Iverson, in essence, said, Practice? You're asking me questions about practice? What he was saying was, Practice don't matter. It's all about the game. Well, the truth is, our attitude and our effort or what we do every single day, it's a discipline that we do practice. So we can control our attitude and we can control our effort. What does that mean? Giving God the best you've got. Whatever you do, do for the Lord. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians. Uh, our attitude, our effort, our, our uh, effort it often determines our behavior, which leads to our actions. So John Gordon says, Things I can control are my attitude, my effort, my behavior, and my actions. And when I do that, I'm going to be a great team member. We're going to have some announcements in the days ahead about how, how I believe uh, timing is going to go for us, hopefully, as we roll back a few things uh, into normal church life. But I want to praise the Lord for His goodness and grace, and I want to thank you for being faithful, uh, not just tuning in on Sunday morning and your faithful giving. Boy, that's the grace of God. But also in your faithful uh, act of participation in watching the Sunday night and the Wednesday night services online. So God bless you and thank you. And also, I want you to begin to pray for the Ray Roberts State Mission Offering. This is one special way that we help support our state convention of Ohio Baptist. You're going to be hearing more about it in the next few weeks. And uh, we're going to have a Victory March time or perhaps another drive through opportunity for those of you that aren't able to get out yet. But uh, I praise God for you. I love you. Renee and I love you. And I uh, can't wait to see those that we've missed. And we praise the Lord for His goodness during these times. We're hoping to baptize this Sunday morning at 1030. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the model of Paul. And I pray that through him, we would be found faithful, just as he was, to preach the gospel. We know that you don't waste pain, that we can grow from it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You have a great night, and we'll, we'll see you soon.